My next guest started writing for pleasure, won a writing scholarship, has written for the Katie Morag TV series and has now published a book. Louise Wiley, is there anything you can't turn your hand to? Well, I'm a great believer in that everyone should turn their hand to whatever because it's um, never too late. The world's your oyster. Have a go. Um, yeah. And when you started out writing, were you thinking this is just this is a personal thing or were you thinking maybe maybe i can make this into um, part of a career i actually came along to um, expo north in its infancy when it first started out which of course was go north and um, i didn't really know what it was that i was any good at i still probably don't know but it's been a great enjoyable process finding out i have to say that i came every year and even followed it workshops, seminars, um, all of which were free of course, throughout the year, um, learning different elements of the industry. So everything from locations to filming to um, writing, you name it, I had a bash at it. And it was really just through a process of elimination that I thought, yeah, I think I, writing is the thing that I'm probably better at. So that's how it came about. Now you've written a book about your father, mm -hmm. the artist and wise man, mm -hmm. George Wiley. Mm -hmm. What's it like to write a book about a close relative? Were there surprises for you? Yeah, I mean, actually I wasn't going to write this book because um, I decided when my father was quite ill laterally and in a home that he needed some form of stimulus and that we would organise a celebratory year because um, event management at that time was my background and I thought yeah I could do that my sister was looking after his well-being I'll go on and do that and we had a wish list of things and one of the things at the bottom of the list I have to say was to write a book and make a film and both of those things I assumed that somebody else with knowledge would do far better than me and would know more about him than me. But as time passed over the year of this celebration of exhibitions, performances and various other things, I realised probably I did know a lot more about him than I thought. So I thought, crikey, here am I trying to be a writer. Damn it, I'm going to write this book. But I had a co-writer in Jan Patience who was an arts journalist. And um, she was keen to write a book, and we both worked on this festival, so we decided, the two of us, um, to give it a go. And um, it was quite an enjoyable process, but I have to say, um, I knew a lot about my family. I'm very lucky in that respect. It was quite a secure family. Father had a happy childhood. We all did. Um, had ups and downs like everybody else. But in doing the research for the book, we had to... Um, me a little bit more professional in terms of employing a genealogist to make sure our facts were correct about the family. And one of the things that threw up was that the, my father, his great-great-grandfather, was a Corsican who uh, was born in, I think it was 1756. It could be different, but I'm pretty sure it's around then, in Corsica, and was volunteered into the Royal Navy at 12 years old by his family, along with another couple of little French boys. And I'm assuming it was like a form of evacuation given the times then, and he was sent on his way and that was it. He was in the Navy for as long as it was possible, and then the Merchant Navy, and then retired and married uh, in Wales. But yeah, so it was trying to find a commonality of things back through the family. And, and of course, my father was a great uh, seaman, you know, in, in his life. Um, and, and through all sorts of other things which led a sort of string to carry us through, so, yeah. And it's interesting because, of course, the other thing that you've done is write an episode of Katie Morag, the mm. award-winning television series produced by mm. the BBC. What was it like writing for that? Um, well, yeah, that, that was a tremendous privilege, I feel. Um, that came about through Expo North, um, and we were offered uh, the opportunity, two of us, to join the production team, move on up um, throughout the year and a half that they were preparing to write the first series um, of that. And 
we learnt absolutely loads. And we were told at the time, you won't get to write on this. You know, this, this is just a purely a learning exercise, um, a very valuable one at that. And um, in the end, we did get to write an episode, both myself and the other girl, Jan Story, who came from Expo North as well. And um, it was a co-write, I have to say. We, were, we had the guidance of another expert uh, writer in Sergio Kaski. But, yeah, fantastic experience. Yeah, one of the most enjoyable. Well, it sounds like you never know with Expo North, you know, what, what opportunities can come out of attending. I know. <laughs> That's the wonder of it, really. I mean, it, it has evolved and it's grown so much over the years. Um, but I still come along because you never stop learning. I mean, look at me how old I am. I'm bloody 67, but I'm still learning and I still love it. And I, I was just saying to you earlier, it, it's a wonderful th feeling having um, meeting with people that you have a commonality with that perhaps you would never meet in your normal social circles of home life, work life, careers, babies, kids, whatever. These people have one very special thing in common with you, and it's the creativity. And that is a wonderful thing that you can experience at Expo North. Well, we've loved having you here. Louise, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Not at all, thank you.